Hey there, my name is Mac Rourke, also known as Rourke Boys Barbecue, and today we're giving you a preview of one of my episodes from my masterclass series, Cooking with Charcoal, streaming only on Embers TV, the first streaming service dedicated to barbecue. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the episode. It's no secret that across my social media platforms, the one thing I am most known for is steak. We're starting with these two beautiful prime tomahawk ribeye steaks. We're gonna do a reverse sear up to about 120 degrees and finish it caveman style directly on the coals with our SNS grill. For me, of all the cuts of steak I've ever cooked, the ribeye is easily my favorite cut. We have this beautiful cut in the center of the ribeye called the eye, which is just beautifully marbled throughout the entire piece of meat. That is separated by a delicious band of fat that is gonna render throughout this longer cook that we do with the reverse sear. And at the top, you have a ribeye cap, which is also known as the spinalis, which is easily the best bite on the ribeye. You remember when I talked about the pork butt and how you have to steal a little piece of the money muscle? This spinalis, the ribeye cap, is the piece that you have to make sure you save a little bit of for yourself. A very underrated part of the ribeye that I always like to keep for myself as well is the tail. So we got these two ribeyes from our butcher and one of them was beautifully Frenched already. The fat at the bottom of the tail was taken off, tapered a little bit. You have a nice clean Frenched bone, just beautifully represented tomahawk steak right here. A Little bit different than a cowboy cut. It's gonna have a little bit of a shorter bone a bone-in ribeye is going to be cut off right at the end of the meat. So the only difference between a tomahawk, a cowboy cut, and a bone-in ribeye is the length of the bone. Same parts otherwise. Eye of the ribeye, the spinalis of the rib cap, and the tail. To prep these ribeyes today, a little different for both because the one came out perfect from the butcher. I do not have to do a single thing to this ribeye. Not one thing to this tomahawk, it's absolutely perfect, is all we're gonna do is season and put it on the grill. But I'm gonna use this as a guide to how I wanna prep this second one. A Little bit too much fat down here throughout the bone. This here is just gonna hold on to that seasoning. It's not gonna render, it's extremely fat. We're gonna save some of it, but we're gonna French this ribeye very similar to the first one that you saw. As we trim here, I'm gonna get rid of all this hard fat, but I wanna make sure I maintain the integrity of the tail of the ribeye here. And you have a nice guide with this little, this little chunk of meat right here. And you can see very easily how it's separated from the eye of the ribeye. Small division right there. So I like to kind of trace out where I'm gonna start my slice. I don't wanna cut through that piece of meat. So I'm gonna maintain some of that fat and bring this through right to the bone holding on to where that meat is from the tail, okay? So we go ahead with a nice little, you know, nice little outline there. We're gonna go ahead and be able to cut directly through until we get to the bone. And now once we hit that bone, we're just simply gonna turn and slice straight down. All right, now listen, I hate wasting meat. I don't care if it's fat, it's got a little bit of meat. I can throw this on the grill in a pan, render it. You're gonna get some beautiful fat from it that you can use to wrap a pork butt, wrap a brisket. I mean, I never want to, to waste anything, especially when it looks as good as this. We can go ahead, just pretty this up. We still have that little bit of fat here. We're nice and round off the side here, and we can just there's your bone running down the distance here, and we can just kind of trim. Now I am by no means a professional butcher. This isn't anything that you can't do at home. We're gonna maintain all that meat 
along the bone. That's going to be your little treat at the end after you slice it up for your friends and family. You keep the bone and you're going to have all this meat off the bone that you're going to be able to, to eat caveman style. All right, so we're all set up here. You can see in that little bit of time, we have two very perfect tomahawk steaks. Nice, beautiful, long bones. We're now ready to season. We're going to go ahead and get this SNS kettle set up. We'll come back, season, and get these right on the grill. Today, we're using our Rub City Grork Boys for beef. Perfect rub to complement any steak that you use. Salt, garlic, fresh ground black pepper. Those are the three most important ingredients that you're going to need for a steak. You can feel free to use a binder. We're outside. We've allowed these steaks to kind of come down to room temperature. They have a lot of moisture on them. They've been sweating out a little bit. So this seasoning is gonna have no issue sticking to it. So we're just gonna go straight through, no binder. Very thick cuts of steak. These are about an inch and a half, almost two inches thick. So season liberally. Don't be worried about putting too much. It's gonna melt into that steak as all the fat renders. With a steak this thick, you will not over season. Go ahead and season that bone. We're gonna go ahead and flip. Always make sure you get the sides, get the top where that spinalis is. And we're gonna let these sit for maybe 10 minutes. Let that seasoning do its job. Really incorporate, sweat out real good before we go ahead and put these on the grill. We're gonna let these rest sit for about 10 minutes. Really let those seasonings do some work to the, to the beef. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get the SNS kettle set up. Today, we're gonna to be using one of the accessories that I had mentioned. You're gonna to get to see it firsthand. It's gonna set up a two zone indirect cook. It's called the slow and sear. Our tomahawk steaks have sweat down for about five to 10 minutes. We're ready to get this SNS kettle set up. We're going to use our slow and sear again. If you have it, why not use it? This will help control the lump charcoal that we're gonna use on this cook. We're going with lump today on these tomahawks because on the final sear, I'm going caveman method directly over the coals. And with lump charcoal, it burns hotter. All right, so a hotter burn is gonna give me a better sear on these tomahawk steaks. Again, with the slow and sear, that's gonna cover your one half direct cook side. And then we're gonna go ahead and have our indirect side where the tomahawks are gonna go. Perfect example of what you're gonna come across with lump charcoal. Am I gonna use this? Hell yeah, I'm gonna use this. I'm actually gonna take this big chunk and just put it on the bottom of the slow and sear. So once this fires up, I got the smaller pieces of lump are all gonna be lit and completely fired up and I'm gonna throw them right on top of that big log. So we have our accelerant. We're gonna go ahead and put this underneath the chimney. We'll go ahead and light that up. So we have our chimney about 75% full with this lump charcoal. Remember, because the lump is not uniform like a briquette, there's a lot of airflow that's gonna be going in between, which is why, because of all that oxygen in between the lump charcoal, burns a lot hotter than your briquettes, which are kind of piled on top of each other, less airflow in between. We're gonna let this go for about 10 to 12 minutes. We'll be ready to rock. We'll dump it into the slow and sear, and then we'll go ahead and get our steaks right on that indirect side and let those go. Okay, as you can see, it definitely holds true to burning hotter. You can simply see it just by the way the chimney has reacted. Uh, these, these lumps of charcoal are ready to go. We're gonna drop them in the uh, slow and sear. We're gonna fill the reservoir with some water again because we're dealing with a hotter burn, that water is gonna help regulate the temperature and add a little bit of moisture to the cook. I have some oak wood chunks. I prefer oak with beef. I think it just complements it so well. Let's dump these coals, fill that reservoir, and then we'll get these steaks on. Water right in the reservoir, fill that up. Not gonna take long for that to start boiling and steaming. 
We're gonna put this grate on, again, lid on top, open those vents a bit, let it come up to temperature, and we're gonna shut it down, get it to about 300 degrees, open it up and we'll throw the steaks on. As you can see, we have a lot of white, dirty smoke coming out of this vent. We're gonna go ahead and open that up about halfway, let that oxygen get in, get that temperature up to about 400. Our lower vents open as well. It's not gonna take long because we're using lump charcoal, burns crazy hot. So we're gonna give it about five minutes, close off these vents down to about a quarter open, both bottom and top, we'll sit at 300 and we'll get on the stakes. We're back and our SNS kettle is up to 300 degrees. We're sitting perfectly right where we wanna be. We're gonna take this lid off, double check everything, and we'll be ready to throw these tomahawks on. Looks absolutely perfect. Our water's boiling. The coals are ripping hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these very strategically, right? We have our bone side here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that pointing towards the fire, kind of protect the meat, and I really wanna protect that cap that we've talked about. So that's on one side. Same thing with the other. I'm gonna keep that bone facing the fire, facing the heat, but I'm putting the meat side up against the bone of that first tomahawk that I put there. And you'll see it fits perfectly. It's like they're spooning, they're cuddling, they're ready to go to sleep and create absolute magic. I'm gonna hammer it home every time we talk about it Make sure that your vent is over top of your meat because that's where you want that smoke and that wood-fired flavor to go. We're gonna sit tight here. We're gonna let these roll for about 30 minutes before we do our first temperature check. We wanna pull these steaks off at about 120 degrees internal because then we're gonna hit it with that caveman sear and we will pull it off the caveman sear at about 130. Let it rest for about 10 minutes. During that rest, it's gonna to continue to carry over another five degrees and we will slice these at a perfect 135 medium rare. Okay, we're an hour into this cook. The tomahawk steaks, I have a feeling, are gonna be right where we need them to be. Remember, we're shooting for like 120 degrees internal. Right off the bat, the color on these, I hope it's coming through. Just this beautiful mahogany. I mean, you can see it. I see the smoke. I have all this fat just beautifully rendered. This is, it, this is where we need to be. I have a feeling we're gonna be right between 120 and 125 if I had to guess. Make sure when you probe, especially a big ribeye, we're not gonna probe here at the spinalis. That's obviously gonna be a higher temperature. We wanna probe right in the center of the eye of the ribeye. So we're gonna go ahead and get nice and deep in there. Remember, it's two, two inches thick. It's a big cut. And we're at exactly 123. That's perfect, because now we're gonna hit our caveman sear, and that's gonna get us up to about 130. 130 is right where we wanna pull it off after the caveman sear, because that's gonna give us about 10 minutes to rest it, and we'll, we'll temp up during that rest. It'll carry over, and we'll end up at about 135. Perfect medium rare. There's several ways that you could sear these ribeyes. If you want to, you could take them inside, fire up a cast iron. I love cast iron. You could put them on that, ripping hot, get a beautiful crust. We could flip them over, put them directly over the coals. We know the coals are fired up. You see orange, you know that it's at at least 900 degrees. Orange, that color is gonna develop at 900 degrees Fahrenheit. You can get up to 15, 2000 degrees, 1500 degrees. We know we're good, we're ripping hot here, I see that color. For us, we wanna show off to some friends. We're having a little party here, 4th of July holiday, whatever you're celebrating. You wanna show off a little bit? Do the caveman style. We're gonna take these ribeyes off, put them on a cutting board for a few minutes. We're gonna prepare our caveman setup. We're gonna take the grates off and we're gonna be able to do this directly in the slow and sear right over these coals. So I have a nice even layer of our lump charcoal. What I actually did, little tip, we're gonna go ahead and smack down on these coals. That's gonna kinda loosen them up, create a nice even layer, get some of that ash down to the bottom 
of the tray so that you don't have your steak full of ash. It really doesn't matter too much because it's all going to come off once we take the steak off the coals, and you'll see that as we go. But you always want a nice even layer because we want as even of a sear as we can get. We're going to take this, place it directly on, and we're going to let it sit for about one minute. So we go ahead and flip it at this point, you can see a couple little coals sitting on top and they come off so easy. That's it. Use your tongs, pull them off real quick, no issue. One minute on each side, we're going to go ahead and take it off, put it on the cutting board. See any little pieces? Flick it off, no problem. We're going to go ahead and get the second one on caveman style that, and then we'll let them rest for about 10 minutes. We'll come back and slice them up. These tomahawks have rested for 10 minutes from the time that we pulled them off the caveman. When we pulled them off the coals, they temped at 127 internal. After that 10 minute rest, we're looking right where we want to be at 135. Per your personal preference, if you want more than medium rare, by all means, just let them sit on the coals longer, sear it longer, and you can get up to medium. And that's where I would draw the line. Let's go ahead and slice into these. We're gonna finish with an edge to edge, perfect medium rare, I just know it. And then we'll dive in and give it a taste. We're gonna go ahead and start with the spinalis. Nice about half inch thick slices. Always make sure you have a nice sharp knife. Nothing makes it more difficult to slice a beautiful thick cut ribeye, then a dull knife. Finish off with that beautiful tail that I talked to you about with the fat. We're gonna go ahead and lay these out nice and pretty. You eat with your eyes, so presentation is everything. And I'm telling you just by the look here, I was pretty confident going in that I nailed this, this ribeye, but I don't know if I had a feeling it was gonna be this perfect. Just incredible slices. We're going to let that one sit for a second. Let's get after this second one. Nothing more satisfying than slicing a steak that you know you absolutely nailed the temp on. This tail here, I told you guys about this. This is the piece that I'm going to kind of set aside for me. Perfect amount of fat, perfect amount of steak, just beautiful bite. Go ahead and lay these out. This is good. So here's one slice of the eye. I mean, we just have a perfect edge to edge pink. There is no, no gray line. I mean, I can't wait to dive into this. Fats rendered great. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful tomahawk steak. Nothing overrated about this tomahawk steak. Don't let people tell you it's overrated. Don't let people tell you it's not worth it. You can see here, it obviously 100% is worth every second. Nothing left but to taste it. So let's get in it. And this is how I recommend. Start first with that rib cap, right? You get all that crusty flavor on the edge of the rib cap. It is easily the most tender part of the ribeye. So we're gonna go ahead, cut off a little slice there. I mean, still beautiful, medium. You know, it's the end part of the steak. So a little bit more cooked than the, than the eye of the ribeye, but easily still the most tender. Yep. That's why steak is my number one. Absolutely incredible, tender, delicious. Absolutely the best bite on a steak. Now let's go ahead, slide out one of these pieces from the eye of the ribeye. Super meaty, nice thick cut. At home, whenever I cook a ribeye, the eye of the ribeye is what I serve my kids, slice them up. So let's go ahead and get a nice little piece of this.
Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. You get that wonderful charred flavor. You get the smoke. You know it was cooked on charcoal. It is unmistakable. And that seasoning, that, that Grork Boys for Beef, the garlic, the salt, the coarse ground black pepper, I mean, just pops off of that crust that we seared directly on top of the coals. This is one that I want to see you try. I want to see social media absolutely flooded with your tomahawks. Tag Grork Boys Barbecue, tag Embers TV. It is time to cut the cameras and we are going to devour these two tomahawks. Let's go, fellas. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to watch more of this masterclass or any other series streaming on Embers TV, go to www.embers.tv and use code GOBIRDS at checkout to save 30% off of your first year membership.